Smart Rapper Gang. What up, Smart Rapper Gang? Today we have the top 10 rules of songwriting. Okay, and I wish I knew this stuff when I first started, but this is gonna massively help you. And I actually almost recommend that you take notes on this video. Okay, because it's, it's gonna help. So? It's gonna help. These are the rules that I've learned over the years that I really want, really want you to know. Like, from me to you. <laughs> just so, you know, so, you know, you're gonna get more music done, you're gonna have just better people around you, just everything's gonna grow a lot faster if you understand these 10 things. So, I'm Rob Level, this is Smart Rapper. Go ahead and follow me on Instagram, Rob underscore Level. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button because I release a new video every day. And hit the little bell, okay? Uh, uh, all right, <laughs> you're gonna get smarter right after the intro. I do this full time, bitch. I do this full time. Every day, day. Stay up on my grind, bitch. All day, day. Stay up on my grind. Right now, some of these are songwriting tips and some of these are life tips that involve songs, okay? So let's start off number one with a songwriting rule, okay, that you really need to know. If you've been on my live streams where I review um, artist music where you submit and then I play it live in front of everybody, you always hear me say this one, okay? Do not let a song go the, for more than 15 seconds without entertaining the listener. Don't you ever start a song and not entertain that listener within the first 15 seconds. Something has to happen within 15 seconds, okay? If it goes 35 seconds, I mean, you're lucky the person even makes it 35 seconds. You know what I'm saying? So make sure that something is said, something happens, you deliver some lyrics, you deliver the chorus, something has to come in here within 15 seconds. That's rule number one, always. Especially if you're not like a super established artist. They may be able to get away with it, but I don't recommend you even try, especially with the attention span that people have today. Number two, this is another songwriting rule. Make sure that your chorus comes in at least by 40 seconds. 40 seconds or before. And there's more than one reason for that. Number one, you wanna pull the listener in with the catchiest part of your song, which is your chorus or your hook. And then you also wanna give more time for you to be able to play your hook more in the song. Because once you pull them in with the hook, if it happened before 40 seconds, you have a whole lot more time to put more chorus in and really get them to keep hearing your catchy chorus. Right? So it makes sense. But also, as a rule, it generally makes sense to always put your chorus in before 40 seconds. Because you want to pull that listener in, you want to pull that person who may be a new potential fan of you right in, and a chorus is going to do that more than any verse will. Okay? Number three, do not show anyone an unfinished song. Do not ever show anyone, especially in the beginning stages, until you get really good, do not show anyone an unfinished song, okay? And there's a lot of reasons for that. You don't want somebody else's opinion on what you're creating affect how excited you are about it, okay? Because if you create an amazing song and then you show it to somebody and they're like, yeah, it's cool, or they didn't give you the reaction that you expected, you'll damn, you're, you'll just like, okay, fuck this song. And I've done that dozens of times. And then I started, I started listening to myself and I'm like, why are you fucking showing these people the songs? Like, who gives a fuck what they think? Why should their opinion affect my song? So now I don't show people songs until I have like 90% of the song done to where the song is so close to done with like even if their opinion affected how I felt about it I could still finish it with just a little bit more effort because you don't want people to ruin your vibe you have for music this also makes you want to finish more songs okay trust me on that I made it one of the first couple rules for a reason number four learn what naturally works best for you to do music you don't have to know music theory keys notes all you have to know is does this sound good to my ear okay that's really all you have to know i have i know people who have tons of platinum records and they don't know no music theory they don't know nothing all they know is this shit sounds good and i can tell it sounds good and that's some real shit so don't worry about learning music theory and all that stuff you can i'm not saying that it's not something that you should do but it's not mandatory but you do need to learn what sounds good i do know some people that can't tell what sounds good for their fucking life and they convince themselves that this sounds good and i'm like bro what are you doing, okay? What are you doing? <laughs> so just learn what sounds good. And number five works along with number four. If you wanna learn what sounds good, listen to more music. The larger catalog of music that you have in your head, the more places you could pull inspiration from, as well as the more places that you know something sounded good. If you have listened to thousands and thousands of great songs, not garbage songs you heard on SoundCloud that weren't from professional artists, but if you listen to all the hits, if you have listened to, I mean, if you, what I did, I already knew a lot of this. I grew up on oldies music and then rock and then rap, but I studied the billboard charts and I listened to every single number one hit all through all, from like 
the 1940s on and I had, I had already known almost all those songs because I'd grown up and I'd heard all of these songs that were culturally relevant and popular at some time in my life and I knew all the songs and I still know them and because of that I have a really good ear for what sounds good a really good ear and you can develop a really good ear but you have to listen to all kinds of music and I'm not, and I'm not talking about just rap music I'm talking about country I'm talking about rock I'm talking about all kinds of music go listen to the hit songs in those genres because they, they were hit songs for a reason because they're very catchy songs you can take those the, the catchiness or the things about them and turn them in, and use them in your mind for for rap music it doesn't just have to be rap okay go learn everything and then it also help you develop a really cool sound because you won't just sound like rap you'll sound like a combination of a lot of cool stuff number six this is a must. Don't just write lyrics, okay? Okay, because it really, at the end of the day, after your first couple of years of writing, learning how to write, that don't mean shit. You have to record yourself. Recording yourself is more important and more vital in your career than a lot of stuff. Because you have to learn your voice, you have to learn delivery, you have to build your style, you have to do all these things. If you just write lyrics, that doesn't really mean shit for you, okay? And you're not gonna develop your recording voice and your presence and your charisma and your character unless you're actually recording and doing it. Okay, so writing lyrics, people send me lyrics all the time. They DM me, Rob, what you think about these lyrics, bro? Wrote this verse. I'm like, honestly, it doesn't matter how hot the lines are. It doesn't mean shit if you can't deliver it. I don't even read them. I don't, I tell them, I don't read these. You have to send me a song if I would even consider checking something out because lyrics, it doesn't matter. The lyrics aren't gonna matter. How you deliver those lyrics is more important than the lyrics and then the lyrics matter. You know what I'm saying? So if you want to get better and you really want to excel, start writing and then also immediately recording what you write so you can get a hang on and a grasp of everything that you're doing and, how, and make sure that you're actually growing your music style, okay? Number seven, and this is amazing advice that I don't think I've ever given on this channel, but I do this on a regular basis. I just didn't really have a place to work this in to a video, but it is a songwriting rule and I do this every time I write. Okay, I even did it today. Try three different options for every melody that you do and for every end rhyme. If the end rhyme, if the, if the bar does, isn't, isn't as strong as you think it could be. Because you never know, just by testing and seeing, okay, could this melody be better? What if I tried the melody like this? What if I went up here or down here? Okay, the little amount of time that you spend seeing if something different works could be a massive difference. You can go, oh my God, that sounds way better. Or if you're writing lines, if you give yourself three different line options to say something different, I usually write like six. It really depends on lot. I write until I know what's right, okay? But I usually often have like three different ones and then like I'll, I'll kind of make it, I'll kind of just consolidate it until, like, okay, this makes sense. And then I'll also always have like an extra line that's like, if, I, if you don't say this or when you do record this, if this doesn't sound as good, try this line as an option. Here's an example of the original that I rewrote the line and then I had four additional options for the line. And having options is gonna make everything better for you. It also teaches you to go above and beyond and create more and you're gonna, you're gonna get better because one, you're working more, you're actually creating more melodies because you're shifting and trying different things, which means that your music style is gonna grow. And because you have more written, you have more options to, to perform with and write and record. You know what I'm saying? It's a good thing to do this as a habit. Number eight, work with other songwriters that won't just blow smoke up your ass. And I'm not talking about your friend who gives you feedback because your friend who gives you feedback, that don't mean shit. You need feedback from somebody who is gonna be honest with you and is also educated and has a good ear in music. Okay, if you get honest feedback from somebody who knows music and can tell you it has a good ear, this is good, that's good feedback. But if they're like, nah, this isn't good, and then they can tell you why it's not good, well, you can stop doing the things that makes it not good and only do the good things. But that doesn't happen until you have somebody start giving you that feedback. So you need to find that person. Also, if you're working with another songwriter, two people working on a song, it's gonna make a song come together a lot faster. It's gonna make a lot better songs, a lot better music. Oftentimes, everybody in studios don't really write their songs by themselves. Most of the time, they're writing songs with somebody else because that other person can be like, not nah, on like that, not nah, on like that. Oh, do that again. I really like the way that sounded. You know what I'm saying? And then you guys do that until it comes together and it comes together way faster. Instead of you second guessing yourself and going, does that sound good? I don't know, I'll come back to this melody because the other person could tell you, yeah, it does sound good. You're not tripping. That's how it's supposed to sound. Okay, cool, let's keep working. That's the power of collaboration in songwriting. When I started getting honest people that I trusted to review my music after I made a song, 
they that it made everything better because they started telling me oh that's dope or they're like nah that's not good and i'm like okay why is that not good and then they would tell me i'm like okay fuck that makes sense okay cool so what i do now is i'll create songs create a bunch of songs i'll damn near get it finished okay like i said in the earlier tip i get it like real close to finish then i bring somebody else in and i'm like what you think about this and they go Okay, cool. What do you think? Okay, and then I'm like, is there anything you don't like? They're like, ah, I don't really like that or that. Like, that's where it, it didn't pull me out. So then I rewrite and I make it better. But it's hard for you to do that by yourself. So that's why it's good to have somebody else help you and give you that review on your music. But it's got to be somebody you trust. Okay. Number nine, you need to write something every single day. There's no reason why if you're an artist, you're not writing every day. And writing every day is going to help you grow your style, get better, and also not forget where you're headed. If you're a songwriter, you need to write every day. If you're an artist, you need to write every day. This way your skills, you don't start losing your skills. And this way you're actually being creative and you're also keeping in the front of your mind, I am an artist. This is what I do. I songwrite so that you never really lose any momentum with songwriting. If you write every day, but you don't have too much time on this day, if you write on Monday and you write a little bit on Tuesday, but then on Wednesday you had more time, well you wrote these other two days, so now you have that momentum and that push, okay, well I'm gonna get in the studio on Wednesday, I'm gonna, I'm gonna record on Wednesday, I wrote these two days, but I'm gonna record on this day. You know what I'm saying? It's just that keeping, the, the, keeping it in mind that you are a music artist and you need to be making music. Number 10, and you've heard me say this before, always, 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 and this is from every songwriter, every top songwriter in the world does this, okay? To my knowledge, in every interview, and in every book I've ever read, you always go for the hook first. And I've always did this even before I was re reading songwriting books because it's common sense. It's logical to think, why would I continue writing verses for a song or working on a song at all if I don't have the most important part of the song? Why would you spend time working on a car or painting a car or buying nice rims for a car if the car doesn't have a fucking engine. You can't even show it off. You make all these dope ass verses, right? Nobody's gonna fucking listen because you don't have a nice hook on the song, okay? You have to have the engine. The engine helps it go. The chorus is the engine that helps it go. A chorus is what pulls in the listener. A chorus is what entertains the listener. A chorus is what makes the listener come back time and time again. No hit song has ever not had a chorus. Think about that. Duh. <laughs> you have to have a chorus. So go for the chorus first. Immediately go for the chorus. Then start writing the verses. Now there are times where you're inspired to write lyrics to the beat. And every time that I've done that, generally, I mean, maybe twice I've made a song uh, where I, I started writing verses. I was so inspired. Then I went back and tried to find a hook, right? But usually if you can't find a hook, don't waste your time on it. That's a rule. You just became a smarter rapper. Go ahead, hit me with a subscribe and hit that little bell when you hit subscribe, okay? And also, follow me on Instagram, rob underscore level. All right, shoot me a DM on there. Check out my SoundCloud, all right? And you know it's a smart rapper channel, so here's the word of the day. I got this right here, man. It's time for word of the day, new words. You can say new words for your rhymes and for your wordplay. By the time you leave this video, you'll be smarter than you was before. This is so stupid. Word of the day today is shenanigans. Probably didn't see that coming, did you? But it means uh, questionable uh, conduct or practices or high-spirited, mischievous activity. And I'm sure you've had some shenanigans before. I'm sure that you've uh, did some shenanigans. It's so funny, every day, dozens of people ask me for a shout out in my DMs because you know they come from my YouTube videos where I have Instagram marketing stuff. So they ask me for a shout out. A lot of them don't even follow me. If they don't, I just decline the message. But if they do follow me, at least respond. And that's the power of follow. All right, you guys, hit me with that subscribe, hit that little bell, okay? And then um, I got the sound, you got my SoundCloud, check me out on Spotify. Every link is below. Sign up for my email list and get the free AR Contacts list, which is every single record label's AR Contact. You got the emails, got the addresses, got all that stuff 100% free just for signing up to my email list. Also, I have a lyric writing course and I have a songwriting course. This like, brings you in the studio. It's like six hours in total of in the studio showing you how to write everything from A to Z from scratch, from beats to, rec to, to recording it, to choosing what's the best melodies and how to write the choruses and the hooks and find the hooks and the bridges and the verses, all that stuff, okay? All those links are below. Anyways, make sure you hit that subscribe and hit that like button, all right? I'm gonna see you guys tomorrow with another video. Till then, check out these other videos, all right? Keep hustling, y'all. I appreciate you watching, and I hope these videos are helping. We're growing like crazy for a reason. We kill it. Small rapper, gang.